Hi there, it's Rick on Microsass, and although Microsass has many benefits, it's not without its unique drawbacks, which you need to be mindful of when starting out. So in this video, I'll be walking through the main challenges of Microsass and offering some tips on how to mitigate these downsides. But first, in case you're wondering what Microsass is, let's quickly define it. So Microsass is subscription-based software that solves a specific problem for a niche audience built by a solo founder or micro team without external funding. So in simple terms, it means it's a bootstrap self-funded side project that you can start in your own spare time and grow at your own pace. Okay, and just before we jump into the details of this video, if you're new around here, my name is Rick. I'm a software developer and I managed to quit my crappy nine to five corporate job a few years back after building and scaling a few bootstrap Microsoft apps. I then went on to sell and exit from those and I started this channel to help you and other software developers get started building your own cash flow in SaaS apps. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the downsides of developing Microsoft apps. Number one is the book stops with you. When you're a full-time employee, you can simply turn up and get paid. So if you spend the afternoon checking out some new JavaScript frameworks, it's probably not gonna be a big deal. However, when it's just you, if you spend an afternoon distracted by the news or social media, then you're not gonna move the needle in the right direction at all. So you need to be the master of your own time. You need to formulate the strategy, make the tough calls and execute on the implementation. There's no manager to escalate issues to anymore. So you need to bring your A game every day if you want to make this a success. That said, you'll find that you'll naturally, will, your mindset will have shifted from just getting through the day to maximizing what you can achieve in every single minute of every day. Uh, this is because your app is your baby and you will want to nurture it and grow it. Uh, and when you start seeing success, you want to build upon it and grow it into a successful and sustainable app. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, we have got the hamster wheel of support, which sounds worse than it is, but to minimize customer churn, you're gonna to need to stay on top of customer support. If you don't respond to them in a timely manner, um, they'll be less inclined to share a positive review of your app, and they'll be less likely to refer other potential users in the niche to your app either. Even worse, if they can't get your app up and running at all, or they find it hard to get help when they need it, you can bet they're going to be canceling the subscription and probably asking for a refund too. So my advice to mitigate this would be to do all the support yourself in the early days. And beyond that, try to get the users on a Zoom call and screen share rather than going back and forth over several days via support tickets. It'll lead to much quicker resolution and a more positive experience for your customer base. And support calls themselves are a great opportunity to directly connect with the users and ask for their honest feedback on the app and to hit them up for any feature requests or ideas they might have. And that direct feedback really is invaluable from your user base. I go into more detail on how to keep your customer base happy and as you scale up in my Microsoft handbook, which is a uh, handbook you can get on my website or on Amazon. The links are in the description below and it talks um, through the different stages of building a Microsoft app, including scaling it and making sure your customer base is still happy. So make sure you pick up a copy of that. All right, next we have got potential for copycats. So if people within your niche see your app gaining popularity, they may look into launching a competing product. And in some cases, these unscrupulous individuals will blatantly just rip off the features of your app and just sprinkle some UI changes on there to make it appear like a different app. Now, to minimize the uh, copycats and their effects, you'll want to make sure any of your client side code is obfuscated. Try to put, perform as much of the app's magic, you know, server side where possible. And in some cases, it's just not going to be possible. And you've got to go into this with your eyes wide open. And the best way to combat these guys is just to offer the best in class customer experience, listen to user feedback, implement feature requests and continue to innovate and introduce new features to your apps offering and just make it more appealing than these, uh, your potential copycats there. Okay, next up number four, we have a reliance on systems and platforms. So if your Microsoft app has a heavy reliance on other systems or platforms and therefore their popularity, then you will need to take this into consideration when evaluating your app idea. For example, if you're building a plugin for Shopify, then the success of your plugin will be intrinsically linked to that of the host ecosystem. 
If Shopify loses popularity, you'll struggle to increase your plugins customer base while the whole potential user base is shrinking. Even worse, if you do develop a great plugin, there's always a chance that the host ecosystem might just make that functionality part of its core offering, thus eliminating the need for your plugin overnight. Absolute nightmare. Um, in my case, uh, my apps Merch Wizard and KDP Wizard were heavily reliant on Airtable as a backend for data storage. I was always mindful that if Airtable was to go bust, I'd need a contingency plan in place, and that would have been just to swap out Airtable for Google Sheets, which wouldn't have been as good as Airtable, but it would have worked just fine. So you should always be thinking um, about your reliance on uh, other platforms. And am I saying don't ever rely on any other platforms? No, of course not. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to leverage any of the great features they have, and you spend all your time reinventing the wheel. I'm just saying go into it with your eyes wide open, and think about contingency for each moving part in your operation. Okay, so in summary, we have got the four points that we have discussed, which are the book stops with you, the hamster wheel of support, copycat potential, and reliance on other systems. Now, there are a ton of benefits to the Microsoft business model. You shouldn't go into this, so blindly ignoring these challenges either. Uh, so say, don't forget to pick up your copy of the Microsoft Handbook, which is available on the website or on Amazon. Um, and these are the topics that I cover on this channel, Microsoft's passive income, quitting your day job and Chrome extension development. So don't forget to like and subscribe if that's the sort of stuff you wanna see more of. And we also have this Facebook group, which is linked below, which is full of friendly Microsoft founders uh, taking their first steps in building their own Microsoft apps. Finally, Microsoft is not all doom and gloom, um, and you might wanna check out my 10 benefits of Microsoft video which I'll link to now, um, or check out my 10 steps to building your own Microsoft video. Both of those will be linked to now. And I'll either see you in future videos on here or in the uh, Facebook group if you went over and joined that. Okay, cheers for now.